Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make digital art that's not only safer, so you don't get sued, but also faster, uh, so you don't have to deal with a lot of issues that come into play when creating your own digital art. If anybody's created out there some digital art themselves, you know that not every single image creation is perfect. And sometimes you get as close as you possibly can to an image creation, and then you have to work on editing it. Well, I'm going to show you a, a tactic or a workflow that I've been doing behind the scenes that you guys could go ahead and start uh, in your businesses today. Not only producing some phenomenal art, but also doing just something that you enjoy in general. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So if you guys are familiar, yesterday I posted a video that said how to make a thousand images from one prompt. And really what I was showing was this different thing where you can take an image to image creation on Playground AI and put it in and then switch up the models every single time and generate new photos once you get a good groove going. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check it out. I'll leave the link in the description box down below, along with other AI videos related to this kind of concept. But something that I mentioned in the video that uh, maybe some people uh, well, would agree with, and I actually got a comment about it, was I was speaking, and this is an ad, this is not the actual video, this is an ad, but one of the comment, uh, something that I was saying is, is that when I have a virtual assistant, and I'm, and I have, and their job is to go out there and upload art for me, I am not concerned with the creativity, I am co solely concerned with the efficiency and the success of it. And that just comes logically from a statistic, like a math, you know, business standpoint, like straight up. I want my virtual assistants to produce good work where they don't have to confuse themselves. Hence why I use, I or I purchase specific tools for them to use. The rocket tagger, the analytics tool, the the all these different tagging tools. They are used so that they don't have to use their mind and figure things out and they just have to copy and paste. And so effectively what I'm doing is I'm taking skills that I have and I'm duplicating it onto other employees, okay? And what I'm doing there is I'm speeding up my success. One of the things that I mentioned is if you're creating AI art... It's not that fast, even though it is much faster than sitting down there and drawing art and things like that. It's not as fast as it could be, meaning there are issues with photos. Like, for example, this is a great photo, but the hand of the model that's drawn is all wrecked. That means the whole entire image is gone. You either you have to sit there and start uh, image in painting or you have to uh, cut it off or you have to do something to make the image better. You might even have to create new generations. All of that takes time. And the one thing that is the biggest, I guess you could say, bottleneck to all of this uh, print-on-demand success is the amount of time something takes. So I'll share with you kind of what I did. And like I said, somebody commented on this below. What I recommended in yesterday's video with creating the thousand images is for virtual assistants specifically, I let them use a image bank tool. Okay, the image bank tool, I already pay for it, so I might as well have them use it. That's the first reason. The second reason that has become increasingly more uh, appropriate and more important to me is the legalities behind this. Uh, and when I say legalities, you really don't know where the AI is pulling from if you don't give it an image to pull data from. Okay, you really don't. Meaning... One time I created an AI image and it looked like a Redbubble sticker because the Redbubble trademarking uh, pattern was all over it. Um, and that could put you behind some legal issues. Uh, I made a video a few weeks back about Getty Images is suing a print on uh, uh, an, uh, um, what is it called an AI image generation tool. It is they're literally suing them because the the image that was created is modeled after their image that they own. My whole point with this is that I'm using an image bank to not only speed up the process when I create AI art, but it's also more safer from a legal standpoint. Let me explain. So if you guys check out these these pieces of art right here, like this photo and this photo. These are viable designs. I can post them on Zazzle. I can post them on Redbubble. I can post them on TeePublic. I can post them on even my own websites and make money off of them. But one thing is important. They only took a few seconds to make. And they came out right almost the first time. So the, the amount of time it took was very, very minimal. 
That's the first thing. The second thing, it took almost no prompt crafting knowledge, meaning it didn't take any kind of uh, skill uh, to become a prompt crafting engineer on AI art, okay, to be able to create this. And third of all, this image was derived from an image that I was legally licensed to use to begin with. I'll explain what I mean. So, the tool that I use, like I said, is this unlimited... Uh, copyright images free tool. You don't have to use this, but I'm, this is a tool that I personally use and I have used for months on end and I bought multiple licenses for all my virtual assistants. If you've been watching the channel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The tool comes from a company called botsandapps.gumroad.com. It costs $9.99 a month. If you buy it yearly, you get a discount, okay, of 20 bucks a, a year, okay? This tool includes millions of photos that are legally, I'm legally allowed to use, okay? So I'm legally allowed to use for commercial purposes. That's the important part here, commercial purposes. Like I said, you can, you can do a simple Google search, but there are lawsuits left and right going on right now because of the AI art. And the thing that's bad about that is it's only going to get worse because the AI art... They're developing trackers now that are accurate, where they can see what, where was the original R image derived from, which is insane. Meaning, like, let's say I take a photo from a photographer, and they took that photo, they posted it on Instagram. I go on Instagram, I take that photo, and I create AI art images off of it. They're going to be able to tell because of the seed technology within, and when I say seed technology, every single AI tool has this. It's a little section that says seed, and it's where the image not only is derived from, but it's variations of that image. And so based on that seed technology, they can tell what was the original image off of this. So let me show you what I did here, okay? And I've learned some tactics. All this art here is created through AI art through this tool. So I'll tell you kind of my workflow. My workflow is first finding an image. So I like to actually, I found here that the landscapes work really, really well. Okay. I can search here landscape. Okay. And I'll hit search. And if you guys want to use this tool as well, I'll leave the link in the description box down below. But I'll search for a landscape. It doesn't matter what photo it is. Okay. I can start off with, let's say, this photo. All right, I'll take this photo. One, all I have to do is click on it, and it will download. Okay, obviously some photos take longer than others because some are really, really much more dense than others. Okay, by the way, this photo of this horse was created the same way. So this photo of this horse, okay, I had the original photo image to image, and I I could show it to you guys. Um, I created all these variations. I added a little uh, right here, a little uh, prompt. Okay, and th then I have this custom made creation and there's a few more of them i mean i can open up the different links i've saved them but even these photos of these landscapes now i'll say this when you're creating ai art the photos of the landscapes are very user friendly and they're very forgiving and there's not too many errors that can go on because nature in of itself is um there's no structure to it right you can have a tree in any random place you can have a rock any random place you could have a river any random place and what i did was I actually favorited them so that we can actually go ahead and see and i'll show you guys all these different things so i favorited them right so let me go ahead and hit reload here and it will take me to the top of my page and then i'm going to go ahead here and click my likes okay and Let's go ahead and click my likes again. This is the one thing that I don't like about Playground AI a little bit. It takes a long time to fetch different photos. But all these photos here, one, two, three, these are photos that derived all from one image that I got here from the Unlimited tool. All these nature photos were the same, okay? These were photos that derived from the tool, and I just go image to image creation. So I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to copy this, this prompt here. Okay, and by the way, I'm creating a website called Stable Diffusion Prompter as a few t as a free tool, uh, Stable Diffusion Prompter dot com as a free tool for you guys to access different photos with their prompts on them. So it's it's in the making. It's it's gonna take a little while, but you guys can check it out gradually. Like you can see how I made this image, the information I used, things like that. So just check that out when you're free. But it's free; doesn't cost you anything. Just check it out. But anyways, um, so I'm going to take this image, right? I'm going to go over here and hit create. And the image that I downloaded, you guys saw the image of the nature that I downloaded. 
image to image. So I'm using this software once again right here. And I could create also more videos on this if you guys want to see it. But I'm going to copy and paste the prompt. Okay. And I'm going to make sure all these different settings here are I'm happy with. So the width I'll increase just ever so slightly just so we can get some more functions here. Uh, number of images I'm going with four. The prompt I'm keeping the way it is. The uh, the the filter I'll keep the way it is as well and hit generate. So now it's generating me legal images that I can use from a commercial standpoint that I know I can use from a commercial standpoint. And, and I can go ahead and sell these. I can go ahead and sell them to other people as a digital file. I can use it on my own products. Uh, so yeah, be aware of that. So, okay, here we go. We got some images. So this image right here is an image that I could fully use. This is an image that I could fully use as well. Now, I personally would not use these because I don't know why these people are in it, but you can go ahead and look here, okay? This is a usable image. And more importantly, I'm gonna go ahead and upscale it. And there's different ways to upscale. You can just straight up upscale from Playground AI, uh, but there's other places where you can upscale as well. Now, this is one variation of that image, right? Now, once again, I'm going to show you here the C technology, like I said earlier, is the way how they can check out where the original image was through code. I'm not some sort of coder, but you can see here, let's open up the image. Boom. Great looking image, okay? Uh, we can decrease the quality if we want and test to see how the images come up. I can also look at this image. This is another st cool style, so I can go over here and hit upscale as well. But once again, these are two images that I could legally use to not only make money off of, uh, but I have I can go to sleep at night not having to worry about getting sued, all right, for the images that I'm using. And I know that doesn't seem important for a lot of people. But trust me, it is. When you get to a certain point in business, you're getting better and better and you're growing. You, the last thing you want to do is run into any kind of issues like that. Okay. Now, mind you, that all came from this one image, right? So let me go ahead and whip out. Where is it here? That all came from this one image. Let's go ahead and pull it out. So these images came from this one image, which is pretty awesome. Now, I could do two things to speed up my results here. I can straight up just edit the prompt. So instead of landscape rocky river and then look for like words of trees and stuff, I could just take here landscape rocky river with mountains. I can add that. So that's a simple addition I could do. And then I could go ahead and generate more. Or I could even switch the uh, model here. The model here will change everything. So I switched here the model to dream haven. And let's see what we get. Okay. On top of that, I can delete certain things from this. Now, some people, two things that I want you to pay attention to, okay? Look at this now, by the way. This changes up the game completely. Let me go ahead and upscale this, okay? And keep in mind, guys, with this whole print-on-demand stuff, every asset that you upload to the internet is a potential asset that can make you money. And it can make you money for 10 years on end. It can make you money for five years. Regardless of the, of, of the time, why wouldn't you want to create something that's more safe for you to make money off of. So you can see here this photo looks great. Okay. Let's go ahead and we could even, sw you know, so many different, I mean, just so many different options you guys can see here. Look at this one. Okay. Another example. Now, once I upscale, it, it will look better, but you get the concept. Let's get rid of this original image. Let's try something else. So let's go over here back to the unlimited tool and I'm going to type in mountain and I'm going to hit search. Okay. And what it's going to do is it's going to look for these photos related to mountain. And it has so many. So, like, for example, this is, where was one? I just saw one with, like, a cabin. Um, right here. Okay. Let's let's try this. Why not? I'm going to give this a shot. So, I'm going to take this photo with the, ca the, with the cabin. And I'm going to type in landscape rocky river. Um, I'm, instead of that, I'm going to type in landscape. And I'm going to delete, like, a lot of these different things here. And I'm going to delete like more than half of them and I'm typing landscape hobbit house whimsical whimsical vibe and let's see what happens right and the cool thing about this is I can once again play around with whatever I want to use here so let's go crazy with this and let's just go with let's see here let's go with oil painting once again I'll increase my quality ever so slightly increase this slightly okay and let's hit generate. We'll generate four different variations. And this is just a landscape straight up. And I wrote Hobbit House. Let's see what comes out. But mind you, this is an image. The original image is legal 
for me to use. I know that I'm not gonna. Oh, look at that. See, these are this is these are images that I know that I can make money off of, right? So check that out. Boom, like that. Okay, we got this image right here. We got this image right here. So many different things that I could do. Instead of Hobbit House, I can type Hobbit Style Cabin, right? Just switching up a few words can shift the momentum of the design entirely, okay? And then from there, after I do this, I can go ahead and pick a different model. So let's just say, let's pick something cool here. Let's pick something creative. We got Haze. We have Warmbox. Hmm. Let's see. Po Polaroid, retro anime. Let's go with something cool here. Let's go with Neon Me Mecha. Okay? Look at these different images, guys. There you go. Different vibes of images. Now, they all derived from what? They all derived from this original image. Now, once again, with me, it's all about simplicity. So, I'm not going to... for If I have virtual assistants right? If the virtual assistant is not the best at speaking English and all that kind of stuff, I'm not going to sit here and train them to do this, okay? I'm going to let them use the tool. I'm going to let them download as much as possible, upload as much as possible with the tags. That's what I'm going to, the tagging tools. For those who don't know, the Redbubble Rocket Tagger, the, the, the AI tools, the all different kinds of tools, right? Uh, for those who don't know, um, there are these tools that exist within bots and apps, okay? I'm not trying to promote. I'm just simply stating the facts, all right? They're all here, the Zazzle AI tool, all all kinds of stuff, all right? But if it's somebody that is more like English, like I'm just picking, starting to pick up some more virtual assistants that are English speak, they're born in America, and they're English speakers, I can teach them, I can run them like a short course teaching them how to do this, okay? And then they could create so many different variations of things that I know that I actually own. One of the things that, uh, I don't want to say frustrate me the most, but are definitely a problem is that when you have a virtual assistant the training that it takes to get them to be where they want is difficult. And this is one of the easiest ways that you could do that. And if you're, if it's not even if you have virtual assistant, if you're doing this solo, okay, would you rather use images that, or straight up no images, and you don't know where this art has came from, the inspiration for it, or would you rather have something that is protected? For me, I want something that I know and legally is protected that I don't have to screw myself over and get screwed over and end up with a lawsuit on my hands. Okay, so that's just a little FYI, but you guys get the concept here. Uh, so, and and once again, if you didn't see that video from yesterday, check it out. It will show you how to. That once again, this is an ad, but it will show you how to um, create these images a little bit faster and gain that edge. And then, as these are being created, you can go over here and upscale other ones. So I'll go over here. Let's just say, for example, and I'll upscale this. And as as this is upscaling, the other four are being created, and so on and so forth. And that will kind of help you know, multiply the speed. Now, you don't have to do this with just Playground AI. There's so many different softwares out there. It's not like I'm a hell-bent fan just on Playground AI. Like I said, there's so, so many out there. So you guys can, you know, kind of see it how you like it. Do, it, do it the way you want to, but you get the concept, okay? And we can look at some of the images, like I said, that I created with this, and I could go over here, and where was it? Those photos with the bears. If you saw the beginning of the video, then you know what I'm talking about. But these photos... Literally, we're creating like two seconds. Um, not two seconds, but like I, I didn't have to sit there and worry about the prompt, start crafting, start editing, because I used that image to image in the beginning um, that already set the base layer for everything. So you get the concept. Hopefully, this video helps you out. Hopefully, it adds to your workflow, make things better. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later, all right? Thanks for watching. Peace out. Bye.